Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Welcome back to Las Vegas, every, everybody. This is day two, we're deep into day two, winding down, and uh, we've been talking to customers all week, practitioners, technologists, talking about IBM's portfolio, we've been having a software-defined Kool-Aid injection, oh, this month, actually, it's been software-defined month, it feels like, a lot on cloud, and um, we're going to talk high-end here. Uh, we haven't talked too much, we talked to some customers about, about XIV, uh, but we're going to talk about the high-end a little bit. Uh, Sidney Chow is here, he's the vice president of the, the high-end uh, disk systems at IBM, and he's joined by Ori Bauer, who's the director of XIV uh, Worldwide Development. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming Thank on. You. Thank you for hosting us. So Sydney, I want to start with you. Um, talk a little bit about what high-end means. Uh, when, when I first met the guys from XIV, we were, we were sort of debating, is it tier one, is it not tier one? It's, it's, it's all, all of those above, so what is high-end? So for high-end storage, right, the most important thing is resiliency and avail data availability. If you can't have access to your data, and if you don't, if you lose your data, all bets are off. So in this um, highly connected, you know, 24 by seven, no downtime kind of a world, right, you have to have access to your data at all times. So that's number one for high-end. Number two is you have to have the performance. You have to have the performance that gives you the, the low latency and the high IOPS to handle the workload. And most importantly, you got to be able to do this um, with unpredictable demands that's coming you know, in and out, okay? So those two things are absolutely critical when you think about the high end. Any tier one high end storage device needs to meet at least these two minimum criteria. And if you think about what's happening in the IBM storage portfolio, Right, XIV and DS8000 are both very good examples of tier one storage. So, another big differentiator between DS8000 and XIV is, is mainframe attached, yep. right? That's the, but, but a lot of people suspected when IBM bought XIV, they said, oh, they're just going to replace DS8000 uh, with XIV. That didn't happen. Why, why not? So, one of the things that uh, you look at, you got to look at, is the amount of. Uh, work and effort and history that went into the DS8000 stack, not only in the mainframe attach piece, but also in the replication, and the, the three side, the four side, the five side, and all of the tunability of DS8000 that can get you down to sub millisecond performance, and we, especially with flash now, we can get down to you know a couple hundred or less microseconds of performance. That tunability is critical for the very exact workloads, be it on mainframe, or on the very high end, you know, heavy OLTP kind of a transactions, right? So that DS8000 definitely uh, is designed and engineered for those high, ultra high performance, ultra high availability scenarios. Now there is a very large segment, right, that has, you know, that, that, that XIV serves for the open storage environment, especially when you're talking about the VMware environments, you're talking about some of the power uh, AIX environments um, and the Linux environments. Uh, those are the environments where it actually comprises most of the market, and what customers want is something that's just plug in and forget it. Don't want to deal with it, don't want to tune it, right? I just want to plug in and let the system automate everything. And that's where, you know, XIV is really, really excels. So XIV is sort of the tier one class for what, what people used to call open systems, remember? We were really non-mainframe and, and, and the fat middle, right. if you will. And we were very blessed to have, you know, two products that really complement each other in the market that serves different parts of the market. Yeah, I mean, there is some overlap there, but as Joe Tucci says, it's better to have overlap than big giant gaps <laughs> that you can drive a truck through. So, all right, so, uh, Let's, let's talk about XIV. You guys have made some enhancements uh, recently. Uh, what are those? Right. Um, so, as Sydney mentioned earlier, we are focused heavily on cloud storage right now. So, XIV is positioned as the storage for cloud. And um, uh, what, what we have done in the, through the recent updates and releases that we uh, developed was to enhance those capabilities uh, so we can uh, better service those type of workloads. Now, First, before we go into the new things that we develop, uh, when you look at um, a cloud environment and the storage for cloud, there are some fundamental requirements that you must meet. For example, it must be extremely easy to manage and use. 
uh, to, to an extent that it can be completely automated uh, without any uh, human intervention. I mean, that's kind of the, the uh, uh, kind of the end uh, of, the, of the scale. Google so for, Nirvana. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. So for that, um, you know, uh, in order to be able to get there, um, then you need to be able to provide consistent performance. No matter what type of workload you throw onto the box, you want it to continue to perform extremely fast and extremely well with no hot, hot spots and with no, um, um, you know, with, without any human intervention doing all sorts of tuning and uh, uh, worrying about uh, raid groups and, and so on and so forth. And the XAV architecture in essence, the fact that we uh, partition the data and we distribute it across all the nodes in the system and across all the hard drives or, or flash uh, SSDs in the system allows us to provide you know, consistent performance no matter you know, which type of workloads. And, and you guys posted just a nice blog about you know, what is required for, uh, for cloud storage. And one of the problems that you discussed there is the noisy neighbor, right. uh, where a specific workload can all of a sudden you know, peak in, in uh, demand for you know IOPS or bandwidth in XAV because all the, the all the um, you know uh, uh, all the IOs basically spread across the different drives in the system and the different nodes. Then it, it you know this problem is is uh, literally non-existent. So this is one element. Hyper spreading is obviously the fundamental architectural premise of XIV. I, I right? agree. Yeah. I agree. So this is one element of of being able to go to uh, for a storage to be cloud storage. The second part. Is, is the integration into the orchestration layer, be it uh, VMware or OpenStack or, or just a homegrown uh, orchestration layer. And here again, this is where we um, you know, focus on XAV. We have a very tight integration with uh, VMware and you asked about new things. So one of the things that we are um, you know, previewing here in the show is the integration to the vCloud, uh, the VMware vCloud suite. Um, and this is something that we're demoing here in the solution center. And again, we are, we are working very closely with VMware, doing continuous advancement so that uh, we can hook up uh, 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 nicely and, and uh, let the orchestration layer, if it is VMware, manage the storage in an in a easy manner. Same with OpenStack. Uh, we are one of the uh, uh, first storage uh, arrays to implement OpenStack. We have um, you know, eBay as a customer who's been using this uh, for over a year now. Um, and, uh, um, and then for those who have their own orchestration layer, we have the RESTful API uh, that can you know, just uh, provide direct access to all the API that, uh, that uh, um, you know, we, we expose. Now, some additional requirements on, on uh, cloud storage would be security related. So things like encryption. Uh, we have data at rest encryption on XAV that allows you Basically, the data gets encrypted uh, as you store it into the storage, but you can, you can decide when you want to enable encryption. So you can keep the storage unencrypted, and then as soon as you, you feel that uh, um, you, know, you need to implement encryption, you just hit a button and, and the data uh, uh, gets encrypted. It gets encrypted as, you know, as data at rest, and uh, it has no performance impact or no, again, no tuning or no, no special uh, Requirements. It just uh, it just works. Okay. Um, and one last element in, in terms of the security uh, that again we are just previewing right now is the um, multi-tenancy capability. And here again, it's uh, the idea is to allow um, uh, delegating some of the storage administration tasks to uh, specific uh, organization, you know, specific parts within the organization. So be it a department or a, you know, if it's a managed service provider, it can be separate uh, uh, customers using the same XIV storage. And each one can see a view as, uh, of his own part of, the, uh, part of the storage and manage it by himself. So he can provision new volumes and, and just manage his section of, of the XIV uh, by himself. So that's another important enhancement that we are just uh, uh, previewing right now. Um, and one last element that I'll, I'll talk about that is, is also helpful here is the quality of service. So the quality of service basically lets you, um, uh, um, lets you offer storage as a service. And when I say storage as a service, I differentiate that from storage as capacity. So if you sell uh, internally within the organization or to external clients, 
um, uh, uh, storage as a, as a service, it means it comes with a certain level of SLA, service level agreement. And um, uh, what the quality of service allows us is to limit um, specific, uh, uh, initially it was specific hosts to a certain level of, of IOPS or bandwidth so that you can uh, you know, decide on different tiers or different SLAs in essence uh, 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 to different uh, type of clients. What we are doing right now with the multi-tenancy capability, we are tying the uh, quality of service to pools which allows you to then hook pools into a specific domain and then you can for specific customers decide you know, how much uh, IOPS can they consume out of the system and if they go above that, we just limit that. So th this can you okay. know, Good. serve for Makes sense, so we'll come back to quality of service, but uh, before I do, Sydney, I want to just clarify something. So tier zero, mm -hmm. so-called tier zero, is, is part of your portfolio or no? Uh, tier zero, you thought you, assuming you mean all flash kind of, uh, all flash yes. array kind of system. Is that considered high end disk? It, it is 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 high end, and uh, Mike Kuhn owns that part of the portfolio. Right. Okay. So, essentially, Mike Kuhn and everybody else in the industry wants to eat your install base. Right. <laughs> so, now at the same time, you've got robust stacks. Right. They're very mature. Uh, you can add flash mm -hmm. into your your systems mm -hmm. to you know extend the life. Of who knows how long. Where's Flash play? Okay, so we just made an announcement last week on the DS8000 family, DS8870, where we introduced the new, what we call high performance Flash enclosure, okay? It is a grounds up design of Flash uh, that breaks away all of the bottlenecks that's in the system. As you all know, you know, in the first step of Flash, you know, and DS8000 was one of the first ones to introduce SSDs back in 2009 or 2008 time, okay? And that was simply to re replace a disk with an SSD. Yeah, the disk got a lot faster, but the back and bottleneck is still there because everything was designed over the many decades, really, for a certain speed of disk, right? But what we have done with the introduction of the high-performance flash enclosure on DS8000 uh, is to break through all of that. The DS8000 flash enclosure is <clears throat> up to four times faster than the SSD version. Now, how do we get four times faster? because we're now bypassing all the control, on the other controllers, going directly to the power controller uh, on the PCI bus. So you, you just bypass all the bottlenecks, and that's why it's designed from the ground up mm -hmm. to handle the very high intensive work. So it's really the best marriage of flash performance with the ultra high availability, the cold stacks, that's already the So a lot of things you can do to extend the life of the high end. I, I liken Absolutely. it to a big brother and a little brother. Right? The little brother's yeah. younger, you know, he's got the swagger, <laughs> thinks he's stronger, but the big brother has the moves, he knows the judo moves and the techniques. <laughs> but, but also, right, over time, you're going to see a lot more of the flash systems technology, right, and, and, and piece parts inside of other storage systems. So when we bought Texas memory <coughs> systems, well, yeah. the flash systems base, we didn't just buy a product. We just we, we bought the company and the technology, and we have every intention of taking that technology and embedding it into our other sources. That's where you get the real return on that investment. And where do where does the high end, I think I know the answer to this, but fit into the whole software defined strategy? I think it plugs in essentially uh, and provides data services. Is that right? Is that Yes, fair so way to the, think the about high it. end, if you think about the, the, the orchestration layer and the, the data layer, right? So the, the products that we have are absolutely superb at the at data layer, and we're adding the orchestration layer on top with all the tight integrations that we do with VMware on XIV, for example, and with all of the, uh, the orchestration layer that we have above the stack. Okay, um, I want to talk about, or talk, talk a little bit about quality of service. I said I was come back to that. So, Quality of service, There's a lot of people say, okay, we get quality of service. So that the way we like to look at it at, at Wikibon, and my colleague David Floyer sort of mm -hmm. educated me on this is, um, let me ask some questions. I, I, can, I presume I can uh, provision capacity, let's say 100 gigabyte volume, and, 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 and get a guaranteed IOPS, pin it to the application, let's say 1,000 IOPS. And I, is it true you can do bandwidth as well? So what we do is, is IOPS and bandwidth, uh, and, and what we allow doing is uh, limiting, providing an upper limit. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're not guaranteeing, but we're providing an upper it, limit. So which capacity can, as well, right? Yeah, capacity okay. is, is what you provision. So you, don't, so you, 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 pro, you provide a ceiling, you won't go over exactly. X, but can I guarantee X or no? 
Uh, no. Okay. No. What, what we provide is the ceiling, I mean the, the top, uh, the maximum number of IOPS that uh, you, know, you can get to. But you can't do uh, a but min. But you, you can do a min, right? Okay. Yeah. So is that roadmap stuff? Is that something you're working uh, on? Is that, uh, um, I mean, I would think from a cloud service provider standpoint that would be important, right? Because I can monetize that. I can say, okay, I can guarantee you X and I can charge you for it. Right, and, and it relates actually to the discussion that you started to have with Sydney around flash and, and you know, the additional capabilities. As with the introduction of, of additional flash into the arrays, it becomes easier to also provide yeah, okay. a minimum capability because with And flash, I can do that through an API call, presumably? Or? Yes, yes, okay. this is all controlled. And I can change that policy on the fly? Yes, you can yeah, dynamically. Can. Yeah, 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 you nice. can dynamically change it, and again uh, provide different tenants with different, um, you know, levels of, of uh, quality of service. Okay, we got to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much for All coming right. to the cube. It was a pleasure Thank having you. you. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with John Furrier to wrap. This is Edge. This is the cube. We're live from Las Vegas. We'll be right back.